Hi, Rosie Piller again. Welcome back. This is the sixth in a series of eight videos about upgrading Oracle VPM Suite to version 12C. At this point, we're well into the upgrade process. We've created new database schemas and upgraded our database schemas and instance data. In the background, closed instances are being migrated as well. In this video, we'll run the reconfiguration wizard to reconfigure our 11G domain. The wizard will apply reconfiguration templates to the domain. It will also update schemas, scripts, and other files that support Fusion middleware products. We've said this before, but it's a good time to remind you that if you are using Oracle Business Activity Monitoring, or BAM, you cannot upgrade BAM 11G to BAM 12C using the standard upgrade procedures. Refer to the document on screen for more details. The topology we're using for our walkthrough does not include Oracle BAM, so we'll proceed as planned. Recall that for our demonstration, we have two hosts, and both hosts have domain files. We're going to run the reconfiguration wizard on the host with the admin server, reconfiguring the domain on that host. Then, after one more domain update, we'll copy the upgraded domain to the other host. We'll see that in the next video in the series. The reconfiguration wizard is found in the Oracle Common Common bin folder under the new Fusion Middleware 12C Oracle Home. We've added two parameters to specify a log file at the maximum logging priority to capture the highest level of detail in the log. The first window prompts us to enter or browse for the location of the existing 11G domain. This is the domain that we want to reconfigure, and it will be reconfigured in place, meaning the 11G domain will be modified and no 12C domain directories will be created. The Reconfiguration Setup Progress window displays the progress as reconfiguration templates are applied. This prepares the domain for reconfiguration. When the process completes, click Next. The Domain Mode and JDK window displays the domain mode set for the current domain. It cannot be changed here. The JDK displayed is the one that was used to start the wizard. If you want to change it, for example, if the one you used previously is not supported, you can browse and select a new one. In our case, the JDK is supported, so we just click Next. If you created any custom data sources, namely data sources that were created using the WebLogic Server Console rather than by the configuration wizard when 11G was installed, then this window appears. In our case, there's just one, the OPSSDS data source. We could use this window to supply connection details for this data source but we'll have a better opportunity to do so later on. So we ignore this for now and click Next. Here too, we can advance to the next window. Recall that one of the 12C schemas we created in the video titled Creating Database Schemas for 12C was the Service Table, or STB, schema. On this window, we specify connection details to that schema. The Reconfiguration Wizard will use the service table to load other 12C schema credentials automatically. Credentials for existing 11G data sources will be preserved. We complete the service, host name, and password verify that the schema owner is correct, and click Get RCU Configuration to test the connection. If the test is successful, we can advance to the next window. Otherwise, we would need to fix the connection credentials. This window lists all of the JDBC data sources and their connection details, 
We can modify the connection information for any data source here. We must specify connection information for any custom data sources that were created using the WebLogic Server Console rather than by the configuration wizard. In our case, there is just one that needs to be configured. We specify connection details by selecting the data source and filling in the details in the top section. Then we deselect the data source and click Next. Here we can test all of the data source connections at once by selecting the checkbox at the upper left and clicking Test Selected Connections. We have all green check marks. That's good news, so we'll advance to the next window. If the domain you are configuring is using a per host node manager, as ours is, then this window appears, allowing you to select the node manager configuration to use for the reconfigured domain. For node manager type, we're going to accept the default domain location, which is displayed here. Note that it will be under the original domain structure. In the node manager configuration section, we're going to migrate the existing per host node manager configuration to a per domain configuration. So we need to specify where the node manager is currently located, which in our case is under the 11G WebLogic server directory. So prior to the upgrade, we've been starting the node manager from this location. After the upgrade, we'll be starting it from this location. Remember that the domain upgrade is in place, so no domain directories will be created under 12C. Last but not least, we need to specify the new Node Manager credentials, the ones we'll use to start Node Manager in the reconfigured domain. For more details, see the Reconfiguration Wizard screens section of the Oracle Fusion Middleware Upgrading Oracle WebLogic Server document. If you want to modify any advanced configuration settings, you can select them here, and you'll see additional windows according to which ones you select. For example, select this option to add managed servers, clusters, or machines to the domain, or modify them, or delete them. Select Deployments and Services to customize how application deployments and services are targeted to servers and clusters. Our topology does not require advanced configuration, so we'll just click Next. On this window, we get a summary of the planned reconfiguration. We check everything one more time and then click Reconfig. Now we can sit back and relax while the reconfiguration wizard reconfigures the domain. When it is done, we click Next. And that's it. We have successfully reconfigured the domain on one of our two hosts, the host with admin server running on it. Remember that we demonstrated just one path through the reconfiguration wizard, one that was appropriate for our environment. For more details, see both the Upgrading SOA Suite and Business Process Management document and the Reconfiguration Screen section of the Oracle Fusion Middleware Upgrading Oracle WebLogic Server document. Here again are the steps in the core upgrade process. In this video, we focused on reconfiguring the 11G domain. The next step is to run the Upgrade Assistant again to upgrade a few remaining domain configurations. Then we'll copy the upgraded domain to the other host. Both of these tasks are covered in the next video, Upgrading Domain Configurations. I'm Rosie Piller. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.